Welcome to the afterlife. You're being reincarnated as a Mosasaur. You pop out of your mom straight into the open ocean with nowhere to hide. But the bigger problem, you're about to drown. You see, even though you live in the ocean, you still need to breathe air because you're a reptile and your ancestors came from land. And no, they weren't dinosaurs either. You're actually a lizard more closely related to Komodo dragons and snakes. You've even got the scales to prove it. But since this ancestor, your species has fully adapted to life in the ocean. And it's one of the quickest land to sea transitions evolution's ever pulled off. And that rapid shift came with some pretty strange adaptations, but we'll get into those later. Right now, you're an apex predator in training. And step one is figuring out where the hell you are. Mosasaurs live everywhere. Every ocean, every continent, even fresh water, though you're specifically a Tylosaurus, so your species rules the western interior seaway. But you aren't doing any of that ruling just yet. At birth, you're barely two feet long. Still, you're not quite at the bottom of the food chain, but nowhere near the top either. And since your mom already left, all you've got left are your siblings. But even that won't last long. Sooner or later, they'll either drift away or get eaten. Either way, you're never seeing your family again. At first glance, being born right out in the open seems like a bad idea, and it is, but the deep water has a lot less predators than near the shore, although the ones that are out here, they're massive, and they could swallow you whole without even trying. So if you want to survive your first hour, you need to start swimming fast. But staying alive out here is more than just avoiding predators. You've got a massive food bill to pay. Unlike most reptiles, you've evolved something rare, warm-bloodedness. It lets you regulate your own body heat, even in these cold waters. But that comes at a cost. Staying warm burns through energy fast. So unless you find something to eat very soon, you're in trouble. So let's try your first hunt. You spot your target, a shelled squid called a placenta ceris. Not too big, not too fast. Looks like an easy meal. You just snapped a tooth. That shell is a little tougher than you thought. Luckily, broken teeth aren't a big deal. You've got a conveyor belt of replacements growing in right underneath, and that's just the start. Your teeth are curved backward, built to trap prey and drag it deeper into your mouth. And just in case that's not enough, there's a second row on the roof of your mouth. Not for chewing, just for making sure nothing escapes. Anyways, how about we just go for something a little softer this time? You spot a school of fish in the distance. You can see them just fine thanks to your excellent vision, but they can't see you, because you've got something called countershading. It's a type of camouflage used by tons of ocean animals, like sharks, ichthyosaurs, and plesiosaurs. You're darker on top to blend in with the deep when viewed from above, and lighter underneath so from below you vanish into the sunlight above. It's perfect for sneaking up on prey. You ambush from below, lining up your long, upside down shark tail beneath you. Then you launch, tail whipping side to side, flippers pressed close to your body, building speed with every stroke. You catch it, and it feels beautiful your first successful hunt. And now, you only have to do that about a hundred more times. It's tedious, sure, but each bite fuels you to get bigger and stronger. But don't get cocky. Nothing this good comes without a price. A buffet like this always draws attention. All the young Tylosaurs have already started to show up, and that just means it's only a matter of time until other predators show up. There are sharks out here, big ones, like the Ginsu sharks that grew up to 25 feet long. But that's not all. You've got plesiosaurs too. They're the long neck ambush hunters who most of the time stick to hunting fish. But at your size, you're still on the menu. Thankfully you dodged the ichthyosaurs by a few million years though. This was a group of fish-like aquatic reptiles that were around for 160 million years. And their extinction, that's what opened the door for newer creatures like you to take over. Speaking of which, time to leave because there's always a bigger fish. Or reptile. Because in these prehistoric oceans, Adult mosasaurs are at the top of the food chain. So you keep your distance. You keep hunting, and slowly, you start to grow. Four feet becomes six, then ten, then fifteen. Your body is long and serpentine, and your head is catching up. Now that it's bigger, so is your bite. You've got this double hinged jaw, which means you can open your mouth so wide that you can practically swallow your prey whole. And at the front of that jaw, you've got a bony rostrum. That's this little piece of bone that sticks out past your jaw. You either use it to slam into the sides of your prey before eating them, or you might use it in search for food on the sea floor. Hard to say, but however you use it, it's doing something. 
And then there's your tongue. It's forked like a snake's. You might even be flicking it in and out, using it to taste the water, track prey, maybe even navigate in the dark. Nobody's entirely sure how you use half the stuff, so you'll have to figure that out on your own. But even with all these upgrades, you're still constantly in danger, because somewhere deep in the dark, something even bigger could always be watching. Life is rough. The key is to dodge anything bigger than you. But when you do get spotted, you vanish into the seagrass. And though you're not the biggest thing out there, you're not eating scraps anymore either. Your prey's getting bigger too. And you're kind of a cannibal now. You take bites out of smaller tylosaurs when the chance shows up, but you're not a monster. You'll eat small sharks, plesiosaurs, basically anything that fits in your mouth is going to end up there. And sometimes you get something exotic. You've been following the ocean currents for a while, and now you're close to the coast. Every now and then you see a pterosaur floating on the surface or diving for fish. The only problem? They're really not that filling. But that's fine, because as you grow, so do your lungs. And that means now you can hunt for up to 30 minutes before coming up for air. But there's another side effect of all that growing, and that's shedding. Just like modern lizards, your scales don't stretch, so they start falling off in patches. This also scrapes off parasites, dead skin, and keeps you slick enough to slice through the water. But the bigger you get, the harder it is to hide. And now, you've got to fight your own battles. To adult tylosaurs, a subadult like you just means extra competition for food. So if they spot you in their hunting grounds, they'll ram you, bite you, chase you off. Usually, you're able to get away before it gets too serious. But every now and then, you stay on your ground. And it's always a bad idea. But by the skin of your teeth, you're able to make it out of these fights alive. Your scars will heal over time. Your ego? Probably not. By about 12, you're fully grown. You weigh about 9 tons, roughly the same as 6 Honda Civics, and you're about 40 feet long, so that makes you the largest predator in the world 85 million years ago. And with this size means your own territory, which you've just taken by eating an old male. And now, you can eat just about anything you want. 20 foot long fish, giant sharks, giant turtles, shelled squid, yourself? Maybe slow down on that one. Because life is about to be more than just eating. It's time to share your genes because it's mating season. During this time of year, you're not growing much, but you're still shedding. Only now, the new scales underneath come with extra pigment. These colors will help attract mates. And combined with being such a dominant and large male, it really isn't that hard. The only problem is you'll have to fight off rivals. But if you're able to, it's really up to you with how many mates you get. That might mean five, maybe 10. It all depends on how long you can hold your ground and how much of a player you are. Life's good and you've accomplished just about everything you wanted, but you're starting to get bored again. One day you spot something strange. It's closer to land than you've ever been, but you need to taste it. It's a duck-billed hadrosaur eating some aquatic vegetation. And before you even think, your instincts kick in and you lunge. Your first dinosaur kind of tastes like chicken, but then it hits you. You've pushed your luck one too many times. You're stuck. And a beach tylosaur only means one thing. You thrash, you fight, but there's nothing you can do. In your final moments, as the waves you ruled watch in silence, all you can think is, wow, guess life really is a beach. Thank you so much for watching. YouTube thinks you'll like this video. And Jehona, out.